So when we found in Make back in 2004, we became very vocal in championing energy efficient and low carbon design and the use of responsible materials. And these values are central to our business. Our mantra is simply to do the right thing. And we set ourselves up as employee-owned business. And I felt it was the right thing to do on many, many levels. Everyone bought into the values, feels wholly involved in and engaged on from day one. And it also is an effective business model financially. Everyone is rewarded equally for the profit in the profits. So as skin in the game. Despite misconceptions, the employee ownership uh, route is sound, well-managed and solid model. It's also very rewarding. And we explore design solutions where everybody can pitch in with design ideas. There's no barriers, but it's not a kibbutz, it's properly run. Environmental, social and governance is taken very seriously in making. We have an internal team, a sort of ginger group for sort of pushing forward uh, a low carbon future. And they share the knowledge and best practice and innovations and learnings and help to educate our teams so we can explore and find the right best solutions and keep abreast of changing policy in the complex climate agenda. But we've also recognised now we need to push even harder if change isn't happening quickly enough. So we're now working together with our like-minded clients and consultants to make a difference. It's easy to be distracted by COVID, but as we come out of it, we cannot lose sight of the biggest issue facing us all, the very future of our planet. As architects, we feel we have a duty to enhance people's lives, transform environments and help protect the world and make it a better place for people now and in the future. As lockdown showed that what cities would look like without pollution, blue skies, clearer seas, nature returning, a real wake up call. And I think we all need to raise awareness using every means possible to be the voice of positive change regardless of sector. In architecture, there's all sorts of assessments to test sustainability of buildings, but we're learning that sometimes the measures don't really work for the user. So they become pointless. And there's a real danger that it slips to becoming a box ticking exercise rather than meaningful, real and meaningful action that will really make a difference. So we're interrogating what we do, what measures we put in place that building users can use and want, and those will have a lasting positive impact. Internally, we've said, don't look back. What's done is done. Now is the moment to look ahead at what should be done better. And that's been our challenge to clients too. No more excuses or looking for others to solve. We all need to act now with our eyes only looking forward to how we can shape the future. And you have to be engaged. Those tricky conversations have influence. In our field on a macro scale, the problem areas around transport, air travel in particular, but also city density. And on a micro scale, how our own operations are run. And it requires difficult conversations, but they have to be had and we shouldn't shirk from that responsibility. And we all know it's policy that gives real incentive, but the policy is not coming quickly enough. So we can't wait. We need to get engaged in how we make our own industries can improve and keep pushing other solutions. Other investors with the money and the connections have a huge role to play to make an impact on policy, a local, national and global level. And some thankfully have similar values to, to ours and are already only investing in low carbon solutions. So at Make, we're very active in undertaking research, exploring ideas, evolving solutions by engaging our clients to make a difference and to ask those difficult questions. How can buildings be more energy efficient? How can we adopt what's there? Can we innovate? What is the operation embodied carbon, life cycle, circular economy, supply chain, materiality? We all stand very firmly behind those values. And we've given ourselves the permission to turn work down and walk away from those who don't share our values, who just don't get it, who just don't care. However, our first approach is always to positively influence and change their minds, interrogate the brief and build on it, to be very transparent, to think about beyond the obvious barriers. We've designed workshops, open dialogue, to do everything possible we can persuade, cajole and steer. Overall, our business processes we work hard to reflect our values so that we attract like-minded people to us, recruits, clients, consultants, and suppliers in that way. Up front, we know that their values and ethics align with our own. We don't subscribe to box ticking, the bandwagon ambulance chasing or tokenism. For example, in the wake of the George Floyd tragedy and Black Lives Matter movement, we didn't just support the social media campaign. We took stock and established an equity, diversity, and inclusion group and have engaged external consultants, consultants to help us 
better understand and talk openly about the issues, educate ourselves and raise awareness to bring about change. Our teams meet bi-monthly and having established a working program that transcends our practice and many of our initiatives and outreach work in schools, universities and charities as a result. Doing the right thing as a business and individually is one thing, but ultimately there's an urgent need for regulation to enforce positive action from those who are more reluctant. There is a need for personal action too. I think change the direction of our own firms to only work with those who can convince the Dutch planet lightly will make a huge difference. So together we have an extraordinary reach. And I'm sure that for many of you, I'm probably preaching to the conversive, but it's great to have the opportunity to debate these critical issues. And the race to COP26 in November is probably the most crucial gathering of world leaders and seen by many as a last chance to make a difference on global warming. So let's use it as an opportunity and a milestone for our individual firms to think about credible differences we can make internally with our clients and suppliers. Let's make November a line in the sand to galvanize our teams and bring brilliant solutions. To put another way, stealing the, from the title of the series, let's lose it as a moment to retune our firms.